um, I'm still a bit unsure about it. How can I unpack the title in order to get the proper meaning across? The subject matter of the research is the public's ideas and morality and what is or isn't perceived as right to do for musicians, especially females, on stage. Uh, I was also thinking that it would be ideal if I could draw parallels with the song Blurred Lines um, and its singer Robin Thick. If you think about uh, his recent performance at the VMAs, why did he not receive the same backlash that fellow singer Miley Cyrus did when his performance was just as outre, if you will? Um, do you accept such behaviour from male musicians more readily than female musicians, and if so, why is that? In terms of what I have read already, it's clear that the public have a certain mindset with which they regard performances like Miley Cyrus's and how they pass judgment on the performer themselves. I'm sure everyone's realised that there are hundreds and hundreds of articles relating to public reactions to this performance. Um, it seems like everyone's got an opinion from the general public, fellow celebrities, journalists, everyone's got something to say about it. Um, however, Interestingly, there are practically no articles written about Robin Thick, as I mentioned before. Every article is about what Miley did, what Miley wore, how Miley danced, what she should or shouldn't have done, and how it will affect people's perceptions of Miley, but there's barely mention of Robin Thick going around. It's come to light that Miley and musician Sinead O'Connor, who is the people have heard of, are having a kind of online feud at the moment. It's very public. Uh, in response to Miley's sighting of Sinead as the inspiration for her Wrecking Ball video, Sinead wrote an open letter to Miley. This letter is like, publicly available on the internet, anyone can read it. The gist of it is, you will obscure your talent by allowing yourself to be pimped by the music industry. Miley retaliated that, and the list goes on, they're still having an argument. Uh, this sparked my interest in the opinion of the former generations of musicians of the current generation. What do old musicians such as Sinead think of performances like Miley's or even other musicians like Rihanna, Britney Spears? And why do they think that? What's wrong with it? Why are people getting so head up about things? Uh, in terms of my theoretical framework, um, I don't find the general problem. The general problem is the perception of female musicians in society. My research question why do the public and celebrities have negative reactions concerning the morality of female musicians? Uh, the key concepts in my research. One is to examine the recent performance of Miley at the VMAs and analyse reactions to it in terms of gender, sexuality and morality. Another concept is to examine why these sorts of reactions might be had by the public and by celebrities and it would be really helpful if I could sort of reference gender and feminist theory here. I'll talk about that more later. Uh, literature support. As I mentioned before, there's a lot of articles, videos, everything about people's reactions to this performance. Um, to support my research and the context of my research, I'm going to use some of the following sources. Mythology is the top one. It's a book by Roland Barthes. Um, it's a collection of his essays which examine the tendency of contemporary social value systems to create modern myths. Barthes uses the science of semiology, which is the science of signs and indication, uh, to identify the process of myth creation. He uses a theory called Ferdinand de Saussure's system of sign analysis, which is basically, uh, for a very rudimentary example, if you see smoke, that's a sign of fire. You see one thing, it indicates another thing, even though you can't necessarily see the other thing. Uh, I thought this might help me to deconstruct the DNA performance itself. What strikes the viewer or has been engineered to make the viewer notice it? If you bear in mind that Miley's performance was probably carefully crafted by PRs and managers, all sorts of people. And I've got an interesting point in the paper, which is what we're going to do. Uh, another book I'm going to look at is by Barbara Creed, the monstrous feminine film, Feminism Psychoanalysis. Um, in this book, Creed challenges the view of the patriarchal society by arguing that the prototype of all definitions of the monstrous is the female reproductive body. Creed uses Freudian theories of sexual difference and existing theories of spectatorship and fetishism. This will tie into my research by examining how Miley has been infantilised in her performance, for example, the costume that she wore, and also how this shows control. Uh, on the stage, she takes a subordinate position to Dick, and she's always being controlled by her managers, and she's to a certain extent controlled by the media as well. Um, my research will explore the idea of the need to control women, and therefore, 
if but will also help with analysing the reason why the public and celebrities reacted how they did to the performance. And there are some other books here which are just also help put my question into context and further examine the idea of gender. This will also help me um, give a sort of psychoanalysis, psychoanalytical background to my question. Um, and my plan. This is very work and it's definitely subject to change because I'm really not sure if these headings are good or not. My introduction is just going to be about 500 words to explain what the question is about, what the purpose of the research is. Um, I'll identify the general problem and question the and the questions the researchers pose. First heading is going to be Miley Cyrus and DNAs. I'll explore Miley's performance and deconstruct it, hopefully using the science of semiotics, so Rhoda Bart, and maybe tie in a bit of the feminist theory from the Creed book. Um, I'll bring in the ideas of infantilization, female control, and performativity, which comes up in the bottom book, which is by Judith Butler. Uh, the next heading is going to be a question of morality, and that's going to deal with the reactions that the public had. What was wrong with Miley's performance in their eyes, and why? Uh, here I'll bring in psychoanalysis and gender stereotypes or gender roles. Uh, Miley's previous career as Hannah Montana could have skewed the public's opinions, and I'm not going to bring that in here as well. And um, hint at maybe how thick was not penalised by the public so much. I've only got I've only lost a few thousand words to that, and not need more. Might need a bit of tweaking. Uh, and then the next heading pimped by the industry, which is to do with all Sinead's letters to Miley, warning her about how she's basically going to be a puppet. Um, not only have I looked at Sinead's opinions, but I've also found some opinions on the performance from Cher, Annie Lennox, and Paul McCartney. They've also at least something which might be able to bring in here. Um, also, under this heading will come, again, the notion of controlling females, female musicians. And I might bring in the notion of sex cells, how and why that started. Uh, possibly the idea of role models and or corporate influence on musicians, and how these things again might skew the public's perceptions of female, bleh, female musicians and their performances. And then my conclusion, which is to say what was the point, what was discovered, um, does what I found support or refute the argument that the public's opinions are skewed by the media? Um, that's about it, I think. Great, thanks very much. <laughs> Okay, has anyone got any questions? Okay, I've got a, a, a couple of uh, things here. I th it's interesting that you're, you're focusing, focusing more specifically with Sinead O'Connor than perhaps the, the wider discourse that that has um, instigated. So the Annie Lennox and Ander, Amanda Palmer and the other sort of open letters um, that have occurred as a result. Um, there is another one. He did a... Uh, Mark Eitzel was also on his uh, website written an open letter to Miley Cyrus. It's quite interesting to get a, a male perspective here. Um, so that's, that's worth having a look at, so I can, I can put you in touch there. I think certainly Jen, uh, Judith Butler's performativity is going to be essential to this. Yeah. Um, and I think the notion that you've already acknowledged a theoretical framework within psychoanalysis in terms of infantilising her on stage was very interesting. So you, so that actually speaks of a wider conversation, and in, in terms of um, how age becomes disproportionate in the music industry, the older you are, the less mileage that you seem to have, and how problematic that is. And I wonder, actually, if that's what Sinead and Annie Lennox are in part commenting on. Oh yeah, definitely. Because in Sinead's letter, she's like, they're just using you because you're young. Uh huh. I think it's going to be a cru crucial point to you to use your theoretical framework as a buffer zone so you don't get too riled up with this. <laughs> um, that's why it's there, to allow you that distance. Um, also, a really useful text for you, for because you've got kind of psychoanalysis over here and you've got semiotics over here yeah. and you need some, somewhere amongst that feminist theory is going to come in. So it may be that you need feminist methodology to frame all of that. And there's a really great text by Caroline Ramazanoglu that um, will be really useful for you, just to help you frame and control both the elements of, of the, um, the theory so one doesn't start overshadowing the other and you can retain control over it. Because I think there's a possibility that always happens when you're using theory. Yeah. If you're including Joan Riviera's Masquerade, 
you will need to, at some point, if you're discussing Robin Thicke, you will need to then apply the Lacanian uh, parade because you have the male, then you have the female. Yeah. Okay, so if you're going to use one, then it invariably you'll need to yeah. incorporate the other as well. Yeah, I'm confused about like, how, if I'm going to bring Thicke into it, because there's so much other stuff to talk about. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to sort of hint at it and then try to work from it. Like, okay. In which case, then, make a decision. You either include, no, no, I know it sounds like a really silly thing to say, but you either include him or you don't. I think if you, if you don't include him, then you may be missing something out because she wasn't on that stage on her own. Yeah. And I think the fact that he was there show it throws her behaviour into sharper relief. And then it's connected to the whole control Absolutely. The fact that if she'd have been on that stage by herself, then could we have read that as being an empowering move, as we've seen with Britney, as we've seen with Madonna even? But because it was under that, it was framed by a patriarchal construct that then informs the whole, the whole performance. So I think you'll need to make a decision there. But I would probably err on the side of a caution of including him, even if Miley gets a, a more thorough deconstruction than him. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Thanks very much, Phoebe. Can I just say something, Phoebe? Um, I saw something on, on Sky at the planet. I don't think it's come on.